Hello. Today we are going to look at different trigonometry questions. We are going to solve some questions together. And all the questions are going to be about trigonometry. <clears throat> Our first question says, in triangle ABC, the line AB is given as 12. The angle BAC is given as 80. The side ABC, the side BC is given as 20. 22. The first question says, work out the size of angle ABC. Remember, when you are given three letters, the angle you are finding is the middle letter. So angle ABC, which we are supposed to find, is here. However, we don't have information that can directly give us the angle ABC. Therefore, we need to first find angle theta. Hmm? Find the angle, the angle theta. And in order to find theta, we shall use sine rule. That is sine of theta over 12 is equal to sine of angle 80 over 22. As we know, the angle goes with the opposite side for sine, the angle goes with opposite sine. Hence, we shall have theta as the sine inverse of, make 12 go this side, and it will be 12 sine 80 over 12. Hence, theta will become 32.4910-5048. Now, after getting theta, we know the interior angle sum is 180 for triangle. Therefore, from 180, we need to take away the sum of 80 and 32.49. And that means we shall take away 112.49. And the balance will be 67.589.4952. Hence, this will now be the angle a, B, C. And because this is our final answer, we shall record it as rounded off to one decimal place. Let's look at question number two. The area of the triangle A, B, C is given as 30 centimeters square. Angle ABC is obtuse, meaning the angle is more than one nine is more than ninety, but it is less than one one eighty. So that is obtuse angle. So this means when we are working out for the angle ABC, we need to get our answer to be more than 90, but less than 180. We know the area is given as a half, is given as a half times side A times side B times the sign of the angle at the position of C. So basically, this and this is our A and B. 
and that is our angle, angle C. However, we are given our area as 30, so we shall replace our area to be 30. Our A and B will be 12 and 8, and we need to find our angle, angle C. So now we work out. Divide by 2, divide by 2, we get 6. So that means 6 times 8 is 48 sine of the angle C. We shall divide by 48 on both sides. So that we are left with sine C. And finally, angle C will be sine inverse of 30 over 48. And if you put in your calculator, it will give us 38.682.187.45. When you look at our answer, our answer is acute. Now, we need to get 180 and take away 38.7 so that we can get our, our obtuse answer. And when we subtract, we shall get 3, 1, 4, and 1. And finally, our obtuse angle will be 141.3 degrees. Let's go to question number three. Okay, there we go. The question says, Don Hampton, Don Hampton is 48 kilometer from Cast Town, Cast Town, on a bearing of 57. So Don is represented with the letter D. Castro is represented with the letter C. So if D is 48 kilometer from D, if o, from C, sorry, on a bearing of 58, as we know the rule of bearing that um, it must start from north and it must go clockwise until the point. So the bearing of 57 means this angle here will be 57 degrees. Okay. Eastville is letter E. Eastville is on the bearing of 84 from Castro Town. Now to mark 84, from Castle Town, it would represent the whole of this angle, and this whole will be 84 degrees. However, if I want to know the portion of the angle which is inside, the portion of the angle which is only inside, I will have to subtract with 57, and I will end up with 7 and 2. And that will give us the angle inside here to be 27 degrees. But the question did not stop there. The question said, the Eastville is on the bearing of 84 from C, and also on the bearing of 150 from D. That means I have to keep my north at D, and I indicate my bearing of 150 degrees. That is from D, in order to see E, that is Eastville. So that is the information which is given to us. Now let's go to the question. The question says, calculate the distance of Eastville from Castro Town. That means we are looking for this distance down. Now, basing on the information given to me, it's incomplete. However, I can complete it 
using the data which we have replaced. First of all, if we look at the bearing which was given, that is 57. 57 is co-interior with this part. Uh, sorry, it's uh, alternate. Means if 57 is here, even we have 57 in that place, that makes us have 57 inside here. Also, we know a straight line is 180. If I take away 150, I'll remain with 30. And this means inside here, it is 30. So if I combine the two, that is 57 plus 30, I get 87. And it means my angle here will be 80, 87. If I have that angle as 87, I need to know the angle at E, the angle here. I will take 180 minus 87. That will give me 93. And then take out 27 also. That will give me 13, 6, 8, 6. It says the angle inside here will be 60, 66. So now that I have complete information inside the triangle, I have 66 here and I have 48. I have 87 there and I have X. Now using sign rule, I can find my distance E to C. I'll take sine of 66 over 48 is equal to sine of 87 over x. I'll cross multiply and x will be alone. 48 will go to sine 87 and over sine sine 66. Hence, my distance now, when I multiply 48 times sin 87, and then I divide by sin of 66, that will give me 52.470533364. And being this is my final distance, I will round it off and I will write 52.5 kilometers. And that is our answer of the distance from Eastville to Castro, Castro Town. Let's move to question number four. Here we go. The question says we are given AB as 6.6 as shown there, BC as X, as shown on the diagram, A to C as X plus three, and also we're given angle ACB as 60 degrees. Calculate the perimeter of the triangle. Give your answer to one decimal place. When you look at this question critically, you do realize that we cannot find perimeter because in order for us to find perimeter, we need to know the value of X as basically perimeter of this shape will be 60, oh, sorry, 6.6 .6 plus X plus X plus three. Now, in order to find this perimeter, I need to know the value of X first. So look properly, you do realize that in order to find this value of x, we need to use cosine rule. So let's apply our cosine rule. As we know, the angle is given and the opposite side is given. So the formula would be c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2 ab cos of the angle which is directly to the side of C. So we know the side opposite is 
6.6. We know our A, let's say now, this is our A and this is our B because this is our C. So our A is X, so it will be X squared. Our B is X plus three, so it will be X plus three squared plus minus two bracket X bracket X X plus A plus three and then we have cos cos of 60. There we go. So I have x plus 3 square, which means x plus 3 times x plus 3. And I simplify this, I'll get x square plus 6x plus 9. So when I'm simplifying here, 6.6 6 square, I'll get 43.56 is equal to x square. Now, the expansion of this will be plus x square plus 6x plus 9. Also, after minus 2, first of all, here we have minus 2 multiply by cos of 60. Put this in the calculator and you will get minus 1. So that means we have minus 1 here. Then minus 1 times the product of x and x plus 3. So x times x, I'll get x squared. x times 3, I'll get 3x. So next, I will have 43.56. Remember, x squared plus x squared will give me 2x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now open the bracket with minus 1. So I will get minus x square and minus 3x. Then I will simplify again. 2x square minus x square, I will get x square. 6x minus 3x, I will get positive 3x plus 9. Then now I will take 43.56 to this side. And I will remain with 0 is equal to x squared plus 3x. And 9 minus 43, I will get negative 34.56. So finally, now I have a quadratic equation. Finally, I have a quadratic equation. So you can use any formula to work out the quadratic equation. That could be general formula. Or for now, let me use my calculator. So my calculator gives me two answers. 4.56712.4525. And the second answer is negative 7.56712425. Now, according to length, we shall always take the positive length. And our positive length is 4.567. So we shall substitute x in our perimeter with the value we have obtained. So it will be 6.6 .6 plus. 4.567 plus 4.567 plus 3. Now, if I add all this, I'll get my final answer. And my final answer is 18.73. And since this is my final answer, I will write it to 3. 
significant, significant figures. Let's go to our next question. We have got the shape given to us. And our first question says, the diagram shows a field ABC. And ABC is a triangle, as we can see it. The first question says, calculate the length BC. And if you look for the length BC, it's opposite the angle. Hence, we shall use cosine rule. So the side BC square will be equal to 82 square plus 55 square minus 2 times 82 times 55 times cos of 72, which is the angle given. So BC square will be, now since we know all the values here, you put it all in your calculator. And our solution is 7566.8673. So to get BC, we have to do square root on both sides. And when we do square root, our BC will be 86.9877261616. And since this is our final answer, we will round it off to three significant figures and it will take us to 87.00 meters. That is part A. So let's look at part B. Calculate the angle ACB. So where is ACB? ACB is here. And since now we know that our answer is 87 or 86.98. We can now use sine rule to find this angle given. So let's work it out with sine rule. So it will be the sine of 76 over the answer we obtained, that is 86.9877 is equal to the sine of the angle at C over the opposite side, and that is 82. So we shall cross multiply to take 82 to the other side. And as after that, we find the, the sine inverse of the whole solution. So when we take 82, it will be 82 sine 76 at the top over 86.98, 77, which is the solution we got, we got before. So plug it in our calculator and get the solution. And our solution is 66.1575797. And being our final answer for the angle, we shall give the final answer to one the small, the small place. Let's go to Part C. Part C says the get G lies on AB to the nearest distance from C. We know our A in this corner and our B is in this corner. Our C is somewhere down here. This is our C. We know the corner here is 76. And also we know the side here is 82 and here 55. When we are told the shortest distance from C, it means the distance from C to the line AB that will always make 90 at that line AB. So being that G is lying on the line AB, meaning our G spot is here. So this is our place G. Now we are asked to find AG. 
It means AG is the distance here to, to there. So when you look pro pro uh, properly, this takes us to Soka, Soka Toa. And if you look at Soka Toa, this side will be opposite. And this is hypotenuse. This is adjacent. And the side we're looking for is adjacent. So it will be cos. So cos of 76 is equal to adjacent, which is our AG over 55. So put this side over one, cross multiply, and 55 will go to the side of cos of 76, and we get our AG. And finally, our AG will be 13.30570426. So being that this is our distance from A to G, we shall write it to one to three significant, significant figures. Let's look at question D. So, a different triangle, a different triangular field, PQR, has the same area as triangle AB. Right. Since they have the same area, before we move forward, let's find the area of ABC. And once we get the area of ABC, then we proceed with our question. So since our ABC triangle was given with 76 here, 82 and 55, so the area will be a half multiplied by the side of 82 multiplied by the side of 55 and multiply by the sine of angle in the middle. So once you plug this in our calculator, it will give us the area as 288.016863. So this is our area. Now we are given a different uh, triangle, but we are told this different triangle has the same same area, and our triangle is PQR. So we know side PQ will be 90 meters, side QR will be 60 meters. Work out two possible values of angle PQR, two possible values. So the two possible values would be more than 180 or less than 180 in the sense that it could be acute or it could be obtuse. So 90 there, 60 here. This is our acute possible angle and this is our obtuse possible angle. So we need to find any or both of them. So since we know that the area is the same and we know the formula is area is equal to a half AB sine of the angle, let's say angle theta, and our area is already 188 point something is equal to a half. Put the first side, which is 90, times the second side, which is 60, times the sine of our angle. Now shift all the sides to the other side of the area. So 2188 multiplied by denominator 2 because 2 will go up, 90 will come down, and 60 will come down. And finally, we will be left with sine of theta. In order to get sine of theta, I need to shift sine to the other side and it will become sine inverse. So to get theta, it will be sine inverse of the answer when I multiply the area times two and I divide by 90 and then I divide by 60. 
And when I do so, I get 0 0.81037665. So the inverse, the inverse here will be 54.132744. But the final answer can be written to one decimal place. And our acute answer is basically 54.1 degree. So because we are using sin, and we know sin makes 180, first angle in the first quadrant, second angle in the second quadrant, so I'll get 180, and I will take 54.13, and my uh, obtuse now, my obtuse answer will now be 180 minus 54, and I will get 125.9. This will be my two possible angles for this new, new triangle. It could have the acute angle, which is 54.1, or else it could have obtuse angle, which is 125.9. Nine. We move to question number six. There we are. We are given two triangles which are combined to form a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So first calculate the angle A, C, D. And if you look properly, the angle A, C, D is here. This is the angle. A, C, D. We are given all three sides. And if we are given all three sides, that means to get the angle, we shall use cosine rule, and whereby nine will be the outside side. It will give us nine square is equal to 12 square plus 14 square minus two times 12, times 14 times cos of the angle at C. The angle we are looking is at C. 81 square, 81, nine square is 81. 12 square plus 14 square gives me 340. Minus two times 12 times 14 will give me minus 336 cos over the angle at C. So I will exchange like terms. I'll take 336 cos C, and this side I will bring 81. Then I'll divide both sides by 336, and I remain with cos of C. And to get C, I will do cos inverse of the answer of this. That will be 340 minus 81 over 336. And the answer, I do cost inverse and gives me 39.57121946. And this is my angle, which is represented there. And the angle is 39.6 in the summary of one decimal place. Number B, show that the side BC, the side BC is 7.05, where BC is here. The side BC is here. So I need to show that this side is 7.0. If you look properly, I can use sine rule because I know this side and this side. And then I can use this side to find the yeah. So that will make me use the sine rule to show. So it will be sine of 123 over 14 is equal to sine of 25 over BC. So let's write it down. So here we are. It will be sine 123 over 14 equal to sine 25 over BC. 
cross multiply to find BC. So BC will be equal to 14 times sine 25 divided by sine of 123. So plug in your calculator and it gives you 7.0548030331. But since they're saying collect it to two decimal places, so here is my two decimal places, and when I round off, it will not change. It will mean zero, uh, 7.05, and that is the answer which was already given to us. Okay, let's move to part C. Part C says, calculate the shortest distance from B to AC, from B to AC, the shortest distance from B to AC. As I said, the shortest distance is that distance which moves from the given letter to the line there, and once it reaches there, it should form uh, a, right, a right angle. And this will be our shortest distance from B to, to that place. Now, as we already know that BC is a 7.05, so we have our right angle triangle. We have our right angle triangle, which is here 7.05. 0, 0.5 and the angle here which is 32 at C making 90 and this is point B and we find X. So here we shall use Sokatoa and we shall use sin. So it will be sin of 32 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So when you cross multiply, it will be 7.05 multiply by sin 32 to get the shortest distance. And our shortest distance is 3.73593-0813. And since this is our shortest distance final answer, we write it to three significant, significant figures. We got part D. Calculate the length of the straight line from BD. Straight line BD. Where is BD? Here we go. From B to D. From B to D is the line that is there. That's the line B to D. This line B to D is forming us a triangle. If you check properly, the triangle which is formed is this one, where this is D, this is B, this is C. Here we have 12 kilometers. And down here, it is 7.05 kilometers. And the angle which is there is the sum of 90, I mean, 39.6 together with 32. And the total angle will be 71. 26. So to find this distance here, we shall need cosine rule in order to find here. So let's do cosine rule to get the angle, to get the distance B to D for our question at, a, at D. Right. So the length BD, we shall use cosine rule. So that is BD square is equal to 12 square plus 7.05 square minus 2 times 12 times 7.05 times the cos of the angle in the middle, and that is 71.6. Now that we know the all the values, we plug it in the calculator and the calculator gives us 
2946829. And then we square root on both sides and we get our BD as 11.8446065. And we write our final answer to three significant, significant figures. We move to part E. And the question says, C is due east of A. Due east of A. So if my A is here, that means C is due east. And the law says due east, it means from north, it makes 90. So if this side is 90, even this side is 90. So find the bearing of D from C. So this is our C, the bearing of D. So if D, since D is somewhere up here, I need to move clockwise to cover 270. Then after 270, I need to add on this portion here to get my total bearing. Let's see from the diagram. So from C, from C here, I keep my north and I have to move clockwise. That is to 270. But because I'm looking for D, this 270, I need to add on 39.6 to get my complete bearing. So from our 270, let's add 39.6 and that will be the answer since here it is 39.6 and here it is 270 and that will give us 309.6 degrees as our full bearing of D from point C. Let's look at our next question. The diagram shows two right-angled triangles. Calculate the value of o, x. In order to find x, I need to have one side since I'm given angle. And since I don't have the side, I have to use the information above here to find this opposite side of the first triangle. And once I get that opposite side, I will use it to find x. So this opposite and this is adjacent, I will use tan. So tan of 50 is equal to the opposite over five. So five times tan 50, I will get the opposite. And the opposite now is 5 so this now, I have to use it to find x. So again, x is the opposite. And for the second one, this is adjacent. I will use, I will use tan again, but now with the angle 38. So it will be tan 38 is equal to x over the previous answer we got because we needed it in order to be able to find the value of x. Then I will take it to the other side and it will be 5.9, multiply by tan of 38. And finally, we get our x as 4.655499. Since this is our final X, we will write it to three significant figures because it is our distance in centimeters. So that's our X. So we move to our next question. There we go. The diagram shows a cuboid A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, where CG is six, 
that is the height behind CG. AG is 24 centimeter, and our AG is our slanting line from front down to up behind. The question says, the distance AB is twice the distance B to C. This means if I say B to C is X, AB will be doubled, so it will be 2X. So now I know AB in terms of X, it will be 2X. BC in terms of X will be X. We need to calculate the calculate AB. Basing on the information given to us, and that is 24 for AG and 6 for CG. We need to use them and find the distance A to C. But remember, A to C is the ground surface. Always the ground surface will make 90 with the, the height. So now in order to get AC, we shall use Pythagoras theorem. So it will be AC square is equal to 24 square minus six square. Since we know A square plus B square is equal to C square, right? And our A to B, our A here, this is six, this is 24, and this is our AC. So 90 here. So our AC square plus six square will give us 24 square. So take 26 this side and we get AC square is equal to 24 square. Then do square root to both sides and we shall have only AC is equal to the answer. And our answer is 23.2379. 0008. Now that we have got our answer for the line AC as 23.2379. So now we can use it to find X. Since we have X here and we have two X there, and now we have 23.2379, we can use cos, which can use Pythagoras again. So a square that is x square plus b square that is 2x square is equal to c square that is 23.2379 square. So when we open the bracket, we shall get 4x square is equal to by 40, the square of 23.2. So x squared plus 4x squared, that gives us 5x squared, which is equal to 540. I divide by 5, and then I have x squared is equal to 10108. Then do square root on both sides, and after doing square root, we get x as 10.3923. 0489. But we are not told to find X. Our question they said find AB. And our AB is the double 2X, double of X, which is 2X. So that means I need to get 2 and I multiply it by the answer I got from X. And the answer I got from X is the answer I got from X is 10.3. Nine, etc. And finally, it will take me to twenty point seven eight four six zero nine zero zero nine six nine. And I will round off my answer to twenty point eight centimeters as my final distance for a 
A to B. Now let's look at our last question. Calculate the angle between AG and the base surface. Remember, whenever you are told base surface, you need to use the diagonal of the base because since we are looking at AG as a line and we are having CG as another line, so two lines, when they are connected with the third line, we make a right angled triangle. And this right angled triangle will be A, G, C. A, G, C. So when you have our A, G, C, which is here, this is our A, this is our G, and this is our C. And A, C is representing the ground. So the line A, G to the ground means we need to find this angle. So in order to get this angle, we shall take the opposite side, which is opposite, and here is hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, we shall use what we call sine. So it will be sin theta is equal to 6 over 24. So let's do the working. 6 over 24. So the solution will be sin theta is equal to 6 over 24. So theta will be the sin inverse of 6 over 24. So the sin inverse will be 14.47751219. And finally, we shall write it as 14.5 degrees. So these were a few questions selected by me. My name is Mr. Ishengoma. Thank you for watching.